poison, and two logs will probably do this for him. Yep, it, 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 I believe. There's the charge. Oh, that's it. 14. That is going to be it. There's the poison. Expo Master takes out Roller Bron. On to game two. Right. Yep, it was just a matter of time there. Expo Master got enough damage done to that tower. All right, so <laughs> both players throwing out the thumbs up <laughs> as expected. Just a little too soon. Here comes the push from the Ice Golem and the Royal Hogs gets Tornado to Fireball comes in. Gonna do just a little bit of damage from those Hogs there. Yeah, look at that. And again, Mikael Boya tries to predict where that Miner would go and doesn't get it. Put the guards behind the tower thinking that's where the miner would go. He puts it at the front. Luckily for Mikan Boya, the guards were already moving to the front of that tower. And Expo Master just needs to cycle to his poison. It's a thin range. He just needs to cycle to the poison. Mikan Boya's got to try to get this to work. The tornado blocking it. Mikan Boya, will the poison come out in time? The princess gets distracted by the ice spirits, the bats as well, doing some damage. Here comes the miner. Yeah, it's not about just hitting that poison, it's about defending as well, because he cannot take much more damage, because Fireball from Mikan Boya will finish it. Yep, There's Log the lock. comes in. Will the Fireball be there? Oh, there we go! <laughs> oh! I mean, Expo Master doesn't need to defend that left-hand side. He knows he's got a lot of HP there to work with. Yep, okay. Ice Golem, Graveyard. Oh. Expo Master is committed, and there is suddenly a lot here for Reiki Jones. The battery ramp doesn't connect, the log manages to push it out. But these barbarians are going to go to town, but look at the damage being done at the top tower. And that is it. Expo Master completes the all kill there. Woohoo. 2,000 years later. Me to answer right there as he was trying to just hide it away from me. You have the data <laughs> sheets all to yourself. I'm not, just throwing just, them away right now. I don't want just to know the answer. right now. I mean, he gave me the answer, so we are going to go with Pyramid making Supposedly on a run, on a roll, uh, being mentioned uh, by the side of Simon. But we are going to look at the princess kind of moving towards that. It might be just another uh, lock bait deck from Expo Master. Dark Goblin as well played in the middle. That means it's going to move to the right. It's not going to be able to defend that Lava Hound, but the barrel comes in. Beautiful. Oh, tornado. Beautiful tornado that there from Prince, Yeah, the Prince connected, and the Dark Goblin in the back just going to town. Oh, my. Taking that turret out to 635. What on earth? But look at that. Two Princesses defending against this Lava Hound. It's a death by a thousand cuts. Good tornado. And again. Tornado clearing out all the pups there. Baby Dragon's gonna get some damage in. Not gonna take it down to 635, but 1552 on that tower. Good job here by Expo Master getting the better of this first oh, engagement. Oh, no. I think he lost because he doesn't have a log. Pyramid does not have a log. We tried to confirm with that last car being unrevealed, but the fact that his cycle came around and still didn't use a log for that perfect Princess all the way to a Goblin Barrel. Uh, could have been a multiple value on that one, but I think that Pyrrhic, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a wall. Rocket? Fireball maybe? Balloon? And that's what Expo Master wants right now. He wants that value off those fireballs onto that bottom right hand tower. He gets the uh, tombstone there and hits the tower. 38 remain. Even a sniff will knock that out. Fireball is the last card from Pyrameki. And it does take out that Dark Goblin this time. Tornado Princess isn't there we Ooh. go. She does finally lock onto those pups. Too busy trying to take out the miner. But 38 remaining. This princess gets one volley of arrows on that tower. It is dead. Inferno Dragon takes out the princess. But I believe uh, that Pyramid got a lot more damage than what he expected out of that run. And the master now has to be thinking what his next plan ought to be. Still, the fireball being the last card shows us that he basically does not have the log to defend against all of this. And uh, the skeleton is going to do a pretty good job. And now I'm going to open up the King's Tower. The Fireball will do some type of damage. It's going to be one Fireball away uh, from that tower going out now. And we'll see if this will be enough for Pyramaki to stick on and carry on with this game here. Expo Master knows that his biggest chance of victory is to push down that left-hand side as he can close out that right tower as he just did. Will he be able to hold on for the next seven seconds nice to defend up. this? 46. There's the fireball, finishes it off. Okay, we are tied. And now, King's Own Dragon X's Expo Master has a bit of an advantage coming through. The Prince, the... Oh, oh good. Baby Dragon. 
And we know that's kind of a bad position by X Master to put, put them all together. And now we're going to see a pocket on Summon of that Lava Hound. Now we're going to be going through this situation where the Baby Dragon and the Inferno Dragon are going to be going the Double Dragon route, trying to do all the damage to all of this. And it seems like the fire. <laughs> That's the last ditch ever by uh, Expo Master to put that fire. The tornado up and it goes to get the fireball as well. Yeah, you tornado my units, I tornado yours. It's only fair. And this time the barrel gets no damage done with yeah. the perfect placement of those guards. And the push, it's hard to tell who's going to have an advantage here. Expo Master does have a slightly stronger push, I would say, if he can get these barrels to work. Puts oh, it in the back this time. Okay. And they do get the stabs. The baby dragon was distracted by that uh, prince. prince. Yep. And we'll see if this is going to be the lead push uh, with the lava hound. This has to be because otherwise, if this lava hound does not get job done without a balloon, it's a very, very difficult to get the job there. The We're going to see. Inferno tower. The infernal dragon. It connects tornado to way. Uh -huh. Will it decide to reconnect? That's the question. The dark goblin trying his best to take it down. Does take it down. Pyramekis bottom left hand tower is at 851. The barrel comes in again. Baby Dragon, Ugh. not going to be as effective when you split the, go the goblins like that. 455 on the left side. It's making it very, very close, uncomfortably close for Pyramekis to fly back into this one because it seems like the Lava Pumps will knock the job done. Tombstone will be destroyed out. Yeah, that's going to be the remainder. It seems like that 254 will not last for a very long time. And no real defense coming in. And that will be the Dark Goblin finishing things off. And Expo Master, after a long, long battle through all of that, will get game one victory for himself. Yeah, through two minutes of overtime. Almost every game now. So we'll see again. And later in the matches, we'll be going to the third series of the night. But we're going to go with Peter Becky and also Expo Master to see what we're going to get. It looks like Expo Master is once again playing the Spellbait kind of deck. Skeleton does get one jab in. The Prince charging down is going to charge into the Royal Ghost. Boom. The Royal Ghost gets taken out by Dark Goblin. Dark Goblin takes out the Ice Golem because Dark Goblin is one of the best defensive units in the game. You see if the Dark Goblin obviously getting knocked away by Log. Log allow the Sun to get forward and pass the bridge in. Will die very quickly without getting a single shot off. So, looking towards another barrel cycled very, very quickly here. It has to just lose an elixir. Now going for the fireball. Yeah, but it is worth it. He cannot afford to take damage against the barrels at all because everything else in Expo Master's deck is designed to just stretch out Pyramekis' defense. Taking that one elixir loss, okay, you take one elixir, that's fine. It's better taking one elixir than 500 damage. Sure thing, and where does that one elixir lie in terms of value for Pyramekki? Does he mind uh, losing that one extra trade every single time he goes up against this one, sir? See another barrel, probably quickly cycle back to Expo Master. He probably already has it in his hand now. And for the right timing to stand that out. The skeletons smooth things down along with the ice spear doing a very good job with that. Now we have three muskies out of the plane. Great tornado to get all on the left side. Now it's just probably a fireball away or a poison from the side of Expo Master to finish that off. That will be a good fireball. So six for nine getting the elimination on those three muskies. That tornado was beautiful. Pulling all three to, uh, musketeers together and then fireballing them gives you a two elixir advantage. Three. Three elixir advantage. I cannot count. Oh, wait. It's two. It's so nine minus seven, dude. It's two. Is all it right. seven? Nine minus oh, it's seven. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, man. For once. Always right. Okay. <laughs> Prince charges in. Expo Master decides to throw the barrel on the left hand side. Fireball once again. Knocking out two of those musketeers as the princess finishes them off. No damage oh. done to that bottom right hand tower though. Uh. And the hogs from Pyramechi holding those right until the end. Will he be able to defend this? Okay, the hogs are doing a little bit of damage and not so much so that you're worried if you're Expo Master. Now we're looking for another counter push here. The musket is going to get two shots in and then it is out to 1562. Three muskets here once again, a tornado. And charge it all onto the left side, and Fireball will get the tower and also the three muskies in play. So that yeah. is the value he's looking for. He's looking for a little Ooh. bit more chip damage. Fireball gone. Fireball gone. Princess there is going to do something. The tornado 
is going to distract three of them. The Ice Spirit holding the one that does target the tower, but he has taken significant damage on that top right hand tower. Will Expo Master be able to actually damage a tower anytime oh, soon? Oh, that fireball gets all three. How does he do that? Beautiful read on where those Musketeers were going. Catches all three right on the edge. Very risky play for Expo Master, but it paid off. Will he be able to win though? He's still taking a lot of damage every time those hogs come out. Oh, the barrel. that oh. one long. Could have gone elsewhere. It's going to trick him just a little bit, Pierre Mackey. Go for the prediction long. Did not happen in play. Let's see the three muskies back again. The tornado this time not coming around. So kind of relying on this princess to get the job done. In. And for the Royal Hogs, once again, one to three split. And this fireball could be very good value, but he's just hold on to it for now. I'm just going to stick with the Dark Goblins, which gets the job done. Yeah, he didn't need the fireball that time, which allows him. Oh, oh that luck! <laughs> that is Such beautiful. 529 on the left, and now has to defend against his Royal Ghost on the right. All of a sudden, Pyramid, he looks to be in an insurmountable amount of lead right now, and it seems like that Ice Golem doing a very good job with the skill. He's also doing a fantastic job on their own end. This Royal Hulk's now gonna go in without the Fireball in hand from the side of Expo Master, and this seems to be game over very, very soon here, Simon. That Musketeer is not gonna be targeting the tower, he's gonna target the Prince instead. So this barrel might be the last barrel we get oh. to see, but it is gonna get a few stabs on that tower. Is he gonna take it down to Fireball Oh, that's Rain? it! Oh my goodness, that was his last chance to take that game, because otherwise the Hulk that's when we're going to see something happen. I think maybe we'll start to see the cycles come soon. Unless both players have the perfect hand already. And then we're not going to see any cycling. There is the battering ram. So we see, we're going to see a bridge spam by the look of it from Expo Master. The, bar the battering ram there hits the tombstone. And that Inferno Dragon is very, very healthy. So an Electro Wizard comes down from Expo Master. Fireball though, will take that out. And that's a very healthy Inferno Dragon. Uh, I think this is a control deck uh, with the Royal Ghost with the P.E.K.K.A. Uh, being available uh, for Expo Master. Yeah, it's definitely that deck. And that's so popular right now in Grand Challenge. And we are going to see Expo Master take care of this one and seemingly uh, get a lot of damage onto the left side. 11.66 now. And we're going to look at the Balloon with the Miner being sent down. Just going to ignore the right side altogether. And just going to go for an all-in push, hoping to get what it really requires. Uh, to get the damage and we'll get that one drop from Will that he balloon. Get Will he get gets two? the second one and that's gonna be good and that's gonna get the tower down and that barbarian on the right side will not get the tower so it requires another fireball to get the job done and it will be a poison. poison. But this is really bad now yeah, for Tempora. Tempora has to have this minor balloon work otherwise it is game over. He is taking critical damage on that bottom left hand side. The balloon does not get the damage. This opens up the way for the battering ram. We're going to see a ghost in the pocket. Will they connect? No, the ice golem comes down. We're going to see a bandit in the pocket. There we go. Oh, the, bandits. the miner trying to defend, but the bandit is going to get one, two, two yes. hits. Yeah. Eight, four, six remain. Tempora needs the next balloon to take out that tower. Otherwise, it looks as though Expo Master is going to be able to close out this game. It's a very interesting one in Tempora. Now I'm going to be looking towards the P.E.K.K.A. It's freshly summoned now. And, oh, a good fireball. Got lucky with that one. Uh, getting the, the battle ram as well. We're going to look at the three minions now walking through. And the Infernal Dragon taking good care of the P.E.K.K.A. that was charging in. And this Royal Ghost it has to be the one that I really feared for. And this now balloon coming towards it. Beautiful zap. Beautiful zap on those skeletons there. Taking it down to 6.30. And the e is just shutting it down. Oh, it, it got the it charge. That's it, it. That's it. Poison, Poison. finishes yep, it, it off. Expo Master, my goodness, son. That was well played. Well, I mean, you know, I kind of remember back to what happened in 1v1, and you were wrong again. You said winning out in one, a 1v1 in that game one for Expo Master is going to lead to him losing the 1v1. Didn't happen. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Zone Dragon X to refocus Expo Master into 1v1 just to get them over this final hurdle of qualifying for the wild cards. But then when they get there, best of five format, how well will they do? They, they don't have as much depth as teams like your game with, your Ponos, your AHQ, your kicks. Like every team just has so many good players and Kingzone Dragon X is the one team that picked no one new up.
I mean, with this summer. The current situation, it seems kind of obvious, doesn't it? I mean, they're just trying to get to the playoffs. They don't care about what happens after the playoffs, but it's it's it's, it's a very rushed Ooh. attitude in terms of kind of looking at your situation at hand and hoping that it gets a little bit better from here because Kings, are, although they are the top team in Korea, it doesn't seem as if they're happy with their total results because they feel like they should have won a lot more than they actually did. AHQ, Chaos Theory, and Bren Esports, all 6 and 3 in SEA, have shown that they are way stronger than the Korea region so far. But let's talk about this game. We see Giant, Mega damage. Minion, it's going to get to the tower. They're going to try and, it looks as though they're going to just trade towers here. Oh, and Sparky! Oh my goodness, and the Night Witch is a goner. Yeah, this is bad news yeah. for Koo because Sparky has a 100% win ratio in Cash Royale League Asia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's getting a lot. Koo is getting work done with these golems. Baby Dragon helping out as well. But not as much damage as Expo Master has done. Look uh, how low that is. A tower and a half. It's for Expo Master. A tower and three quarters, I would say, because King, King Towers have a lot more HP than their Princess Towers. And it's going to connect. Uh, it's gonna hit the tower, surely! What? what? Oh go. my goodness! Yeah, just gotta let it. Who just gave up? 3 5 4 remaining. Sparky connects to a princess tower. We do not see that very often. Oh and my. look at that. Expo Master throwing out the preemptive GG. He is confident. He's gonna take it here. The Lumberjack is gonna try and go <laughs> against that giant. Yeah, right. Uh, those bats will make quick dues. Of uh, that Lumberjack, and this King Tower is going to fall faster uh, and then the Princess Tower will fall on the other side. I do say that the Princess Tower does, does fall on the side of Expo Master. It's going to be going to uh, an overtime if it does last 20 more seconds, but who is thinking, in all of honesty, that this is going to last 15 more seconds? The game will end with that one little punch, and that's going to be it. 10 more seconds, and no way for Expo Master uh, to lose the second tower now, and Ku. Valiant effort, but does not get the job done. Look at that Sparky there, right at the end, just playing it right in front of the tower. That is a confident Expo Master. And once again, Sparky undefeated in Clash Royale League Asia. Oh, with Expo Master throwing out the good lucks and replies back, it's going to be Pyramaki and still is going to be dabbing all day long. And the Elixir Collector, the card that Expo Master really just hates. It's going to be back on the line. And we're going to see... Bandit gets a connection on the tower. The, there's nothing ground-based there to stop it. The Minion Horde trying to do its work, but 1,519 1, remain. One Zap will clear oh. those all out. Oh. oh. Wait, he already used his Zap, so... Wow. All right, well, <laughs> casually, yeah. casually does more damage than what three units combined did for Expo Master. And this Miner is going to connect and will do pretty decent damage and it's going to trip away. And you're looking towards the Battle Ram. This time around, we'll see what we can get. We're not seeing a great defensive performance so far from Expo Master. Does E Wiz this? Battering Ram, the Barbarians come the down. The Pekka deck uh, for Expo Master again, the same one that he used last time around. And oh, oh, good Ice Golem. Just blocking the Bandit Charge, and we'll get this poison. Get good value, but it's gonna do awesome in its defense right, and this left tower is now going to the scenario where uh, basically a GG call for Expo Master. I don't know what that means, but for the meantime, it seems like he has been quite defeated for this first segment of the game. Yeah, it's not looking good right now. He took way too much damage from that minion horde and the miner as well, taking that tower down to six, six, two. The bandit comes good, in. Good battle ram. When bandit, will it retarget? No, no, look at that dash completely missing everything. And that bar didn't quite get to the tower. Huh. The bandit on the back, taking out one, the other one. Town. Look at Expo Master's taking way too much damage. Oh my goodness. Oh, this poison will do a pretty good job of getting pretty good value, but right now, if you're Expo Master, you're just looking for damage. One way or the other, you want to get the damage out, especially on that right tower, which is right now down to 1135. Now is to compensate for these three muskies without a poison. What do you do if you're Expo Master? You throw all your cards out and pray. There's the E Wiz. The battering ram is going to connect. I oh, think he's no. sacrificing that left-hand side tower. He has to. 
he has to make this right push work. Because if it doesn't, it is game over regardless. Poison comes down, is Aww. ticking on that minion horde. Bandit there, battering ram. The the miner defensively, the battering ram cool defensively battle too. Ram. That's gonna be it. Damage. No, he is taking damage. No, that's it. That's it. There's no. There's no way he comes back from this one because uh, right now you look at all these units that are coming in. He still has the miner in check with defensive usage, and he has the zap once again to cycle back. And there's no way. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Right. That he was gonna be able to defend on the right side. So Pyramid Gate, through all the pressure and the nervousness that he had to overcome, definitely does the job. And it's gonna beat out Expo Master first. First loss in the season in terms of the.